All right, this shout out, aside from my nose neighbors, so I hope you get here. Um, this is a shout out to uh, my friends across the pond. Yeah, I think uh, I think the UK has done something that we, uh, that I, I can't find this one in the US. I might've missed it. There was a couple of websites here and there, but nothing really like that strong. But then I found this and, and it's, it's in the UK and Scotland and it was just glorious. And I'm like, y'all, thank you. Like, oh, it's blown away, but, but thank you. So, so shout out to, to you guys, cross bond. Um, the idiopathic intracranial hypertension working to relieve the pressure. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Okay, so this comes from the website, www.iih.org.uk. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, y'all. This is so cute. It is a registered charity in England and Wales. And it's just uh, it's information for employers and employees. So, like, so if you have someone who's working for you or somebody that, that you are working somewhere and you're trying to deal with this, you know, what what you need to know and what's going on it's because it's gorgeous okay it's just the way it goes on it explains it just so cleanly and so beautifully so it goes on to say you know idiopathic intracranial hypertension idiopathic meaning where there is no causes found see my other video a serious neurological condition causing high pressure in the fluid around the brain the space around the brain is filled with a water-like fluid cerebral spinal fluid if there is too much of this fluid present, the pressure around the, blur around the brain rises because the space containing the fluid cannot expand. It is this high pressure that causes the symptoms of IIH. Well, what causes IIH? It is a rare condition and less than 10 of every 100,000 people, uh, one or two to seven, uh, most of them women of childbearing age. Uh, men can also be effective. No one knows what causes it. Theories uh, include blood clots and veins around the, the brain, sticky blood, uh, withdrawal of steroids, high doses of vitamin A or foods containing large amounts of vitamin A, use of uh, steroids, hormonal changes, and certain drugs. Anyways, what are the symptoms? Uh, severe headache, papilledema, which I've never had. Uh, which is swelling of the optic nerves, temporary loss of vision, which I've never had because the papillodemary thing, which I've never had. Uh, blurred vision, decreased vision, doubled vision, decreased visual acuity, all of those things having to relate to the papillodema. Uh, pulsatile tinnitus. God. Yeah, the ear thing. Definitely. Definitely have had. Uh, hearing your pulse is like a whooshing sound in your ears or your head. Well, on, on top of that, I also have that high pitch sound, you know, like when you turn on the TV, those old TVs, the ones that had the, the really high, anyways, and pain with eye movement. Yes. Oh God. Yes. Pain with eye movement. I, I didn't have the, the optic nerve thing, but pain. anyways, other symptoms reported by sufferers include, but are not limited to nausea, vomiting, fatigue, photophobia, <gasps> problems with balance and spatial awareness aphasia difficulty <clears throat> using or understanding words yeah like where'd that word go uh disorientation loss of short-term memory also sometimes long-term memory confusion feeling spaced out decreased depth perception and peripheral version being a klutz uh each sufferer is an individual and should be treated accordingly gets better. How is it treated? Most commonly prescribed med medicine is acetazolamide, which is Dimox. Uh, it can reduce the production of CSF. If vision is affected, sometimes the optic nerve is fenestrated, which means they go in and do this really horrible surgery around your optic nerve to make sure that its pressure is relieved. Uh, again, thinking the God's God, noodly goodness, everybody that like I did not have to go through that horrible surgery on my octave nerve to decrease the pressure on the optic nerve but anyways we'll get back to this wonderful resource um some people need regular lumbar punctures or if the medication doesn't improve symptoms a surgically inserted shunt may be used to drain excess fluid symptoms including severe headaches can still occur following surgery though 
even when the pressure seems to have been successfully controlled by a shunt or redu reduced with medication. The symptoms of IIH can be very disabling and may need to be treated with combinations of painkillers and other drugs. Now over there across the ocean, so this is not America people, this is still the UK, but I'm, I'm reading their resource because this is just beautiful. Like why do, why do we have something like that? This is great. Um, you, they, they go over the Air Quality Act. So like, of course that's, but they have an Equality Act. So if you were watching in the UK, um, you know, it, it talks about if you have a dis, you have a disability, if you have a physical or mental impairment, if it has a substantial and long-term adverse effect on your ability to perform normal day-to-day -day activities, uh, substantial means more than minor or trivial, long-term means the effect of the impairment has lasted or is likely to last for at least 12 months. Normal day-to-day -day activities include everyday things like eating, washing, walking, and going shopping. People who have a disability in the past that meets this definition are also protected by the act. And then, of course, they have their usual resources for over there. Okay, employees with IIH. It's a rare condition that has had little research. Let's change that, okay? All right, this is why I'm doing this channel, because I want, I want to be y'all's case study. So, research right here. Um, treatment and attacks of acute symptoms vary greatly between patients. Some adjustments for employees may include adaptations to computer screens if vision is affected. If they suffer from photophobia, need lighting altered. If their job is physically demanding, they may need reasonable changes to their duties, especially if they have a shunt. Great. Uh, it can cause problems with spatial awareness and depth perception, and sufferers can have difficulty with stairs and escalators. Okay, I did, they don't mention like, well, maybe they will mention the, the stuff with the noises. Okay, they mentioned photophobia, but noises, like certain noises, like that fire alarm in certain places. Oh my gosh. Oh, I might not have the photophobia. Like I'm sitting out here in bright sunlight, I'm fine. But if a fire alarm was to go off somewhere, like a certain pitch of a noise, I, I would need to eat it out. Or a ride would be like under a desk, grabbing out my ears and, and just, immobilized because because that particular tone would just dis disable me I, I, I wouldn't be able to move anyways um outdoors judging depths of curbs and the speed of traffic can be difficult hmm. uh, often there are problems with concentration and short-term memory Sufferers can develop strategies to cope with these, but may benefit from having messages and instructions written down or taped so they can play them back. It's important supervisor or manager understands how the person's symptoms affect them and are supportive. Yes, please, please be supportive of, of the people that have had brain conditions and surgeries. Any, any manager, please. Um, they may need to be reminded about deadlines. Uh, there may be a certain times of day where symptoms are worse. Okay, well, yeah. Employers can help by allowing symptoms with IH to work more flexible hours, or depending on the job, possibly working from home sometimes if traveling if, is difficult because symptoms are severe. It's important that employees with IIH are allowed time off to attend hospital appointments with neurologists. Yeah. Yeah, the, the follow-ups are good. 5% uh, will lose some or all of their sight. And in males, the loss is 25%. That's really sucky. Most of these patients are, most of these are patients who fail to attend follow-up appointments. Oh, so that's how important the follow-ups are. I did, did, did go to the follow-ups or you will stop seeing. Okay, so if you're an employer, you need to make sure that your employee makes it to the follow-ups or they could lose their vision. Uh, and then, of course, there's information for financial assistance, but again, this is across the pond, so if you're UK, just look up these wonderful people. Uh, disabled people as workers, again, across the pond things. Um, people living with disabilities, long-term illnesses often have an addition, additional problem-solving skills developed from managing their everyday life. Yeah. Whether you have an employee who has recently been diagnosed with IAH or are considering employing someone with IAH, please take time to look beyond the person's disability and symptoms and look at the skills, knowledge, and experience they can bring to your organization. Oh, 
gosh, now that's a beautiful pair. Oh, I want to read that again. That's, God, these guys are gorgeous. Okay, let's read this again. People living with disabilities slash long-term illnesses often have additional problem-solving skills developed from managing their everyday life. Whether you have an employee who has been recently diagnosed with IIH or are considering employing someone with IIH, please take time to look beyond the person's disability and symptoms and at the skills, knowledge, and experience they can bring to your organization. I don't know who wrote this, but that that was beautiful. All right. Still going through it, though. So, God, that was beautiful. Okay, well, that was okay. Um, it goes over your rights as a worker, but then again, it's the Equality Act across the pond. Getting bit by ants. Um, more about the Equality Act again, again across the pond. Which I mean, I'm just gonna have to refer you guys that are across the pond to these people that iih.org.uk to talk to them about the Equality Act. God, that was a beautiful paragraph, though. <sighs> All right, um, it talks about when you're allowed to ask questions about health or disability. Again, different country, different rules. Uh, talks about adversity. Nah, 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 nah. Okay, yeah, and then it, all the rest of it are rules about if they're allowed to ask about disability, when they're allowed to ask. So we'd have to be looking up, you know, the ADA Act. But... I mean, I just wanted to hand it to you guys, you know, over there in the UK that you actually have an organization and put this out for your employers and employees for something with such a rare condition. Like, thank you. Thank you for looking at us. Like, wow. Thanks, guys. Um, again, I don't know who actually put this together and just put it so concisely and such beautiful writing and paragraphs, but uh, it's nice. It's nice to have a resource available where somebody that's recently diagnosed with this can actually take it into work and give it to their boss like, hey, this this is what my doctor said I have. This is how serious it is. These are some of the things I'm going through. Um, d- d- just so you know. Just so you know, this is what I'm going through. Here. D- these are the things going on in my brain. This is why I can't remember that deadline. I'm not trying to blow you off. You know, I'm not, I'm not doing this on purpose. My, my pressure in my brain has been up and I'm, I'm honestly forgetting that deadline. Please write it down for me. Please let's figure out a new way to do things. So it's, that's great though. That's great that there's this resource available and you know, it'd be great to have a, a United States version available, like maybe where instead of talking about, you know, their version of the American Disabilities Act, we have like our version in there for employees. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm not quite in a condition to write up something like this right now, but volunteers? Anybody? But uh, yeah, just wanted to go over that with you guys, um, potential uh, people who want to work with this condition or who are working and have found that they have this condition or maybe employers who say, oh, they're just blowing off these um, these deadlines or they're just trying to get out of work for all of these doctor's appointments or, you know, they, they just having an attendance issue because they keep having to go back to the hospital or back to the neurologist. Well, it, it, we're, we're, we're trying, we're trying, promise. I'm one of those people that likes to work. I like my job. I like being a nurse. I love helping people. I I love seeing their day get better because they feel better. It's a good calling in life. But, you know, I have a roadblock. And and this, you know, is is a good way to go to my employers and say, hey, this, this is why... Certain things have been happening. This is why I had to stay in the hospital a few days. <laughs> this is why I woke up this morning and couldn't walk right. I'm sorry I couldn't make it to work. So anyways, um, that was just going over that uh, that really awesome article from the uh, IIH.org. 
in the UK and there's even like an email um, uh, info at iih.org.uk so yeah that's they're they're pretty it's pretty nice that they have it all right thanks for tuning in <laughs> bye